Welcome in to On The Go. And we have with us someone who is, I'm sorry, you're just one of my favorite people in the whole wide world. I can't help it. And I always have said I would take a bullet for this man. I really would. And it's Lee Sintel, the Director of Tourism and Travel for the state of Alabama. And Lee, you have been doing this since what year? It's been a while. Uh, this is my 20th year. You know why you're still doing it? Because you're good at what you do. Oh Well, um, I, I'm <laughs> blessed that Alabama is a small state. <laughs> and that is the fact that you can know a lot of people. <laughs> because the person who appointed me to this job right. is Bob Riley, right. who I've known since the nursery of the First Baptist Church in Ashland. That's a lot of history. That's a lot of years. And when I was at Auburn, I wrote for the college paper. I was a year ahead of this bright young lady from Camden, Alabama. And by the time she was, well, she was freshman senator, sophomore right. senator, right. junior senator. And somewhere in that, I started telling her, you're going to be the first female governor of Alabama. Well, I'm excited that we have good leaders, and when it comes to tourism and travel, I, the thing that we were talking about earlier is Alabama has it all. We have it all. No wonder it's sweet home Alabama. We've got the mountains, we've got the rivers, we've got the beach. It, it's unusual for that to all be encompassed in one state. And talking about tourism, tell us how things are going with tourism. Oh my goodness. The numbers, even during COVID, have just been very, very positive. In 2020, which was the worst year for the pandemic, right. nationwide, tourism was down 45%. I'm sure. But in, but in Alabama, we were only down 20%. Wow. We were in the top six states for the least percentage loss. And that's because people had discovered our beaches our state parks, our campgrounds, and people wanted to be outside. Right, right. And, and, and so they, they came in record numbers. We just, we have so many interesting things going on here. Uh, to me, it's fascinating because we have, we're, we're so historical in so many ways, in civil rights, but in our background with indigenous Americans, with, with we were talking to a couple of the generals out at Maxwell, and what's fun for me is they, all our military come in and then they travel this whole state while they're here. When they have time off, they're really adventuresome. And we were talking about Montgomery in particular is the, the, the capital, the cradle of the Confederacy, mm -hmm. the cradle of civil rights, right. and hopefully the cradle of cyber. It, it's oh, an amazing yes. place. Yeah, we have Richard Shelby to, yes, to, to, to thank, thank for that. For that. Yeah. yeah, there's just there's so much going on, and it's all over the state. It's not like, well, one city is right, booming and, right. and other places are not. But statewide, we're all doing very well. What you were talking about the the change in percentages. What about the change in the revenue that tourism and travel brings into this state? I'm I'm glad you asked that question because uh, my counterparts and there's. There's a national organization, and I usually go to the regional organization, it's called Travel South USA, and that's uh, 12 Southern State Tourism Directors. Okay. And I'm, our agency is the only one where we generate our own revenue. Wow. The legislature does not give us an appropriation every year. When people spend a night in a hotel, they pay probably somewhere around 12 or 13% tax. Okay. The first four cents goes to the state of Alabama. Three of those four cents goes to the state's general fund. Okay. One percent goes to fund our agency. So when we as an <laughs> industry do well, then we have more revenue to operate and market our state. When I came 20 years ago, we had a central staff of 26 people, and a budget of about $6 million. 20 years later, we have 26 people. And this year, our, our, our revenue is gonna be in the vicinity of 20 to $25 million. Is there any particular element, what are the top two elements that draw people to Alabama? I think the friendly attitude. <laughs> I agree. 
and, and great weather and great beaches. Uh, several years ago, gosh, it was over 10 years ago, we decided to use the phrase Sweet Home Alabama. I love it. And uh, I, I've had other state tourism directors say, gosh, y'all are so lucky to have a phrase that works so well for your state. Right. When, and, and we did this uh, when Bob Riley was governor, and we did a car tag. Right. And put Sweet Home Alabama on it. And people really like that tag. And I mean, we pay Universal Music of course. for that. And, but we, we never paid for the words or the, or the music because that gets really expensive. Yes. So we just, we pay, uh, you know, it's not, not a big fee, but to, to use the phrase Sweet Home Alabama, I don't even put Alabama Tourism Department on any ad or anything we do because I don't want people to know that Alabama needs a tourism department. <laughs> well, it sounds like we don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, we no, do. We need a good one is what we need. Well, That's what we've got. But we've got a phrase that everybody likes. In fact, the year that it was, the years that it was on the car tags, uh, that was voted in a national poll as the best slogan on a car tag in the country. Well, so I'll I'm vote for that. <laughs> it is. We are so grateful to have you. Thank you so much for all that you've done. And it is Sweet Home Alabama. And thank you for being with us. And get out in your own state. Go travel and see all these wonderful things that we have. And thanks for being with us. And we'll be right back.